Welcome to the Money Hour with Tina Mitchell. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, is a licensed loan originator with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, NMLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC. Now, in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome to the Money Hour at 11.50 a.m. KKNW, the Saturday, March 31st show. I am your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events in our local economy and how it can affect your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but I'm here to answer any questions that you have or connect you with the amazing guests that I have in studio today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. And my lineup for today's show, Tony Sablon with New York Life Wealth Management, Strategies for Building a Better Retirement in This Market, and a regular contributor to the show. Also, Rosemary West with Avenue Properties, Real Estate Continues to Lack Inventory, a True Seller's Market. And last guest in studio, first time here on the show, is Lisa Salvage and Jennifer Kirk. The benefit of working with a real estate team, both of them are with Keller Williams. So great information, great topics, and great guest in studio today. For more information, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at com. And let's start out today's show with a little money chat. Money. Money. First come, first serve, renter law. A little bit of an update. A King County Superior Court judge has just struck down the landmark Seattle law that required landlords to rent to the first qualified applicant. The first-in-time law passed by the City Council in 2016 is meant to fight bias by landlords who may unconsciously discriminate against potential tenants because of the factor like race, gender, or disability. It requires landlords to clearly state their rental criteria and then rent to the first applicant who meets those criteria. Landlords sued over the law last year. In court last month, their attorneys argued they have a constitutional right to choose who they want to rent their property to. When an attorney for the city of Seattle argued that sort of choice sometimes amounts to exclusion of certain people, Judge Suzanne Perishon was skeptical. What the plaintiffs want is the right to choose, the judge said. They want to be able to have their gut check that we use all the time in the real world. In a ruling Wednesday, she struck a similar tone. Perushan, who herself owns rental property, wrote that the choices of a tenant is a fundamental attribute of property ownership. The first-in-time rules few concessions to landlords. Interests do not redeem it, she wrote. While landlords are permitted to set their own rental criteria, the preliminary general rental criteria does not substitute for the discretion to choose a specific tenant. Perushan also wrote that attempting to stop discrimination, the law would have no limiting principle. It would expand the police power beyond reasonable bounds. Because the law requires that the landlords include their rental criteria in their for rents ad, she ruled it's also an illegal restriction on commercial speech. She called the rules sweeping advertising restrictions that restrict landlords. Speech without any individual suspicions of disparate treatment. The law forbids valuable speech activities like case-by-case negotiation. Ethan Bevlin's an attorney with the Pacific Legal Foundation who represented the landlords, called the ruling a victory for property rights, common sense, and our courageous clients who can once again make basic judgment calls over who will live in their property. A landlord isn't just a convenience store where customers come and go within minutes, Bevlin states, Our clients have long-term relationships with their tenants, and they deserve the chance to decide who their tenants will be. 
Seattle is likely to appeal, appeal the ruling, though a spokesman for the city attorney's office has not yet responded to the request or comment. But a spokesman from Seattle City's attorney's office said, we disagree with the court's ruling and we're studying it to determine our next step. So for now, at least the city's efforts to go further than that addresses discriminations has been blocked. So it's really interesting, everything that's happening with the renter laws and with all of the increased in rents, which are continuing right now. Um, that these renter laws came into place to help with homeless. And I've got a really big you know, passion with the homeless community. So a lot of that stemmed from that. But it'll be interesting to see how it plays out and uh, whether things move forward or not. So more to come. So that's the Money Chat coming up next in the Money Hour. Strategies for building a better retirement in this market. It's Tony Salon with New York Life Wealth Management right here at 1150 AM, KKNW after this short break. Are you near retirement? Recently transferred to a new job and wondering what to do with your old 401k? Are you interested in learning about how to create a defensive and offensive strategy for your financial plan? Tony Sablon of Eagle Strategies can help you analyze your current financial plan, life insurance, and investments. Tony Sablon has helped hundreds of individuals, families, and business owners bring clarity to their financial plan. This is Tony Sablon with Eagle Strategies. To learn more about my practice, call me at 425-586-0977 or reach me online at ultimatewealthstrategies.com. To receive a free consultation, call me at 425-586-0977 or reach me online at Tony Sablon at eaglestrategies.com. Again, that's 425-586-0977 or reach me online at Tony Sablon at EagleStrategies.com. The following material is presented for informational and sales purposes only and represents our understanding of generally applicable rules. It is not intended and does not set forth solutions to individual situations. New York Life Insurance Company, its agents or employees may not give legal, tax, or accounting advice. And none is intended nor should be inferred from the information herein. Clients should consult their own professional advisors prior to implementing any planning strategies. This material includes a discussion of one or more tax-related topics prepared to assist in the promotion or marketing of the transactions or matters Addressed. It is not intended and cannot be used by any taxpayer for the purpose of avoiding any IRS penalties that may be imposed upon the taxpayer. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 31st show. It's a great day to talk money, and that's what you'll hear from the show today, how to make money, save money, and build a better quality of life for yourself and your family. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but you can call the show at one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty, or go online at themoneyhour.com. Again, that's one eight five five four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, Tony Sablon with New York Life Wealth Management strategies to building a better retirement in this market. Tony, thank you so much for coming back in studio. It's always great to have you to talk about the financial arena. Thank you, Tina. It's always a pleasure to be here. And a little bit about Tony. Tony Sablama is an advisor with New York Life. His mission is to develop enduring relationships with his clients by providing guidance on their life insurance questions, retirement strategies, comprehensive financial planning, and estate planning. Focusing on you, your family, and your business to identify your life goals and motivations. Tony has a diverse and vast team of specialists that partner with him to help you meet your goals. In his free time, he helps coach professional mixed martial arts athletes and has trained alongside UFC championships, 1FC champions. Leveraging his coaching skills, Tony helps design a financial plan that gets better prepare, um, prepares you for whatever the market decides to bring to you. And I love that, Tony, how um, your personal passion comes into your business passion and, and what you do uh, through coaching. So it's great. So we're talking today, Tony, about strategies for building a better retirement in this market. Why should you start thinking about a better strategy plan for retirement? What do you see with your, your clients or people coming into you? So what I'm seeing these days is that, well, number one, retirement isn't what it used to be. And generations ago, you could rely on a company for your retirement. You could rely on Social Security. Uh, these days, you know, you put in your service, you get a healthy pension, and you lived a comfortable life. That was the past, right? So with today's market, you have to deal with the retirement risks, 
longevity risks, um, market volatility, and related uh, and other related macroeconomic risks, and unplanned uh, spending that could derail your budget. But longevity may be the most significant factor in retirement planning and the hardest to gauge. Uh, so with the steady increase in life expectancy, you may be living in retirement much longer than you anticipated. Uh, with uh, recent mortality tables, uh, a, per a healthy female who's 65 years old can expect to live well into her 80s, and for males, well into their 80s as well. Mm -hmm. And then another risk is tax management, and that's why you really need to take a step back, take a look at your current uh, retirement plan, and just really see what, what else is out there that could uh, get you to the finish line. Yeah, and you know, a longer life is good or bad news, depending if you have money to <laughs> last through that longer life, right, Tony? Yep. So let's talk about the responsibility of retirement. So where does that responsibility lie? So in, in the past, as I said before, uh, people relied on their pensions and Social Security benefits funded by corporations and governments. Uh, the cash flow they took from personal savings was just a small piece of the pie. And since these programs and pensions were reliable, guaranteed, and sufficient in most cases. Today, however, Social Security provides a smaller percentage of the income needed in retirement and sometimes without the benefit of cost of living increases. And pensions are just no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of big companies have bought off uh, their pension liabilities and gave uh, control of people's retirement back back to the people. Yeah. Uh, but all that really did was uh, offload the risk from corporations and gave everybody an opportunity to grow their money by themselves, which some people will do well and some people won't, right? So the idea is to design a plan utilizing pension-like tools and also just being really a, a prudent investor. Yeah, and I always tell my clients if uh, regarding finances and why it's so important to talk with your financial advisor is, and I've said on the show before, uh, when you take a when you take a job that there's no increase in salary or potential to keep up with um, the changes and the cost of living, and of course not. So why would you not make sure that you have that set in for your financial plan as well? So Tony, what factors should you keep in mind when planning for retirement? So, you know, interesting that you speak about uh, pay increases because uh, mm -hmm. inflation is inevitable. Yes. And people in the job force usually keep up with inflation through pay increase. But after retirement, few people can increase their income enough to keep pace with the cost of living without taking unnecessary risk. Uh, so although the idea is simple, many people don't recognize the enormous increase in wealth that can result from beginning to save early. And to demonstrate the power of time, let's look at two different people. You know, you have a uh, Susan and a person named Ken, right? Susan starts starts early, saving a thousand per year in a traditional IRA. Uh, at age thirty, she continues her payments for ten years through age forty, earning an average of six percent per year on her investment. At age forty, she decides to stop contributions, right? So. And that leaves her with 10000 in her account. And she'll have that grow till age 65. Whereas Ken, who starts in his uh, late 30s, right, he begins saving 1000 a year up until age 45 with uh, a, you know, the same 6% annual return. Mm -hmm. You know, Susan, because she started early, will have more in Ken's account just by the simple nature of compound interest. Yeah, you know how much I talk about compound. I mean, it, it's so true And when you get started. So what I'm hearing you say, Tony, that you know, don't procrastinate, but start accumulating and do it as soon as you can right now. Yeah, yeah. and at least start develop the habit of saving, whether yes. that's $100 a month or 500 or whatever that number is. The idea is to start early so you can build that saving muscle. Yeah. And I, you know, we need to do a show all on really helping your kids with um, financial responsibility as well. But, you know, a, a great thing if you're listening and you have have children, whenever there's something that is getting purchased at a grocery store or something that is not needed, always have them contribute a little bit towards that, whether it's five cents or 10 cents, so that they're getting the idea of spending money and saving as well. You know, so, yeah. Um, Tony, uh, hypothetically, how fast can an investment grow? That's a tough question. 
Well, we. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are no guarantees, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, there's a thing called the rule of 72, and what it does is it calculates how long it will take for your money to double. So if you can expect, if you're expecting a 10% on, 10 percent return on your money, and you divide that by 72, your money will double in 7.2 years mm -hmm. and that's that that'll give you a general idea of how fast your money will grow and at least doubling um, gives you a, a, a barometer of you know what that could look like in sure. the future so Tony how does tax affect growth in your portfolio well if you earn a 6% pre-tax return and you are in the 33% tax bracket you can figure about a 4% post-tax return so instead of your money doubling in 12 years using the rule of 72, it really will take 18 years for your money to double if you pay taxes on your earnings each year. So in short, taxes cost an extra six, six years of growth in this particular example. And as always, consult your tax professional and work with a, work with a financial advisor to design a cohesive retirement strategy for you to take into account uh, tax effect. Yeah, and so really looking at all the numbers and, and where they're truly going to end up is going to be critically important to make sure that you don't understate or underestimate what you're, what you're going to need in your retirement. So, Tony, what do you see as the main risks in type of retirement planning right now today? So the main risks I see aside from longevity, inflation, taxes, um, is folks not having guarantees in their portfolio. Mm -hmm. And also the idea of, you know, spending first instead of saving. Um, we're seeing a lot of 401ks that are just not uh, funded up to the level where a retiree would like to have a desire to draw income from. Mm -hmm. Right. So having assets that are uncorrelated is another risk that I see um, because... You know, with the 401 pray, as I call it, you pray that your 401k <laughs> is where, where you want it to be when you retire. Yeah. Right. And, you know, those that are retiring this year are having a good, good retire, uh, have a nice growth in their retirement account. Sure. But that doesn't mean that two, three years from now, retirees will have the same market. So design a portfolio that could... Uh, what's, uh, whether a storm is important. Yes. So, uh, Tony, what financial planning vehicles should you consider in planning for your retirement? So individuals need to think about the bigger picture and expand their use of investment vehicles that, again, like I mentioned er earlier, that are uncorrelated to each other or the market and also consider placing guarantees within portfolio. You know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, life insurance, income protection, annuities, real estate, no one investment will give you the home run in retirement. Yeah. So having some combination of all the vehicles available to you will give you the best uh, um, position to retire. And you know, being a mixed martial arts coach, I have a wide variety of tools to to um, to end a fight, if you will, or to withstand a fight. So why wouldn't you have that same set of tools in your portfolio yeah. so that whatever the market gives you, you can focus more on earning more, enjoying life, and less uh, watching Bloomberg or all the financial drama yep. that's makes, unfolding. Makes sense. So anything else that you should consider when planning for retirement, Tony? Um, really just having your goal, a goal in mind. You know, what I see a lot is folks just investing a certain percentage into their 401k because either their neighbor, their friend, or the company automatically does it for you. Mm -hmm. I think having an end game and, and thinking of, and working backwards. So if you want a certain amount of income in retirement, work that number backwards because you either might be underfunding your retirement yes. or overfunding your retirement. And if you're overfunding your retirement, then guess what? You have more money to spend today and you won't need to contribute as much to your current uh, plan. 
Yeah, and with all the technology and, and software tools that you have, you know, access to to really be able to um, analyze what that's going to look like um, makes it really, really uh, easy. So, uh, Tony, as we uh, wrap up my time here with you, I know that I've got the privilege to be a, a first glance at the chapter of your book coming out. And, you know, offline we've talked, I just, it's going to be an amazing book. So I'd love you just to share with my listeners and what's upcoming with your book. So I got a few more chapters written and uh, rewritten. And I'm really excited to uh, share the book because, you know, as I think about it, it just dawned on me recently where, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a mixed martial arts coach. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the MMA finance guy. I'm going to design Love it. a plan for you because the fight's just different these days. Yeah. Right? So you have bonds in a high interest rate environment, probably not so good for your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Right? And you have the market, which is hot right now. What are you doing to protect all that growth that you've already accumulated and, you know, a lot of financial products get ragged on. But if you look at the best and brightest um, in the industry, such as Tony Robbins, Ray Dalio, and they talk about income protection, yes. protecting all that growth and having money in the sidelines to be able to take advantage of different mar market opportunities. And, um, you know, given this market here in Seattle with real estate, it's just amazing what people will go 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 through mm -hmm. to get to get a piece of property yeah and i feel like there are there's better ways to to fund real estate yeah and great, not, ad not great get, advice and not get too crazy yeah <laughs> so just kind of an on uh call to action or a shout out on uh, things you know keep your eyes wide open to understand what your financial picture looks like. Uh, make sure that you're including in your plan some type of protection on some of your investments. And we all know not procrastinating, and that goes into everything in life, which seems to be the biggest mistakes, and diversify. So, Tony, thank you so much for uh, uh, being here and being a representation of the show in the financial arena. I appreciate your wealth of information and your friendship as well. Thank you. Coming up next on The Money Hour, real estate continues to, with a lack of inventory, a true seller's market in the biggest way. Rosemary West with Avenue Properties right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. Are you near retirement? Recently transferred to a new job and wondering what to do with your old 401k? Are you interested in learning about how to create a defensive and offensive strategy for your financial plan? Tony Sablon of Eagle Strategies can help you analyze your current financial plan, life insurance, and investments. Tony Sablon has helped hundreds of individuals, families, and business owners bring clarity to their financial plan. This is Tony Sablon with Eagle Strategies. To learn more about my practice, call me at 425-586-0977 or reach me online at ultimatewealthstrategies.com. To receive a free consultation, call me at 425-586-0977 or reach me online at Tony Sablon at EagleStrategies.com. Again, that's 425-586-0977 or reach me online at Tony Sablon at EagleStrategies.com. You may have noticed our community is experiencing a homeless crisis like never before. But what you might not know is that homeless families, especially mothers with children, are on the rise. They're one of the fastest growing groups right now. They are unsafe on the streets. And although they may not be visible, they are out there and they need our help. Mama's Hands is changing lives in our community through the House of Hope. It's a shelter for women and children in need. House of Hope provides not only support services, but a home like environment for these families. After they graduate from the program, House of Hope staff continue to keep the families engaged and supported through a whole year-long aftercare program. I'm Kimberly Jackson, director at Mama's Hands. We would love to have you get more involved in helping homeless families and individuals in crisis in our community. Please visit our website at mamashands.org. That's M-A-M-M-A-S-H-A-N-D-S dot O-R-G, mamashands.org. Thank you. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. 
Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 31st show. I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but you can call the show at one 855 411 Again, that's one 855 411 1150 or online at themoneyr.com. In studio right now, Rosemary West with Avenue Properties. Real estate continues to have a lack of inventory and it's definitely a true seller's market. Rosemary, thank you so much for coming back in studio and excited for our conversation today. Great. Thank you very much. And a little bit about Rosemary. Rosemary West has over 20 years of experience same as me, local real estate market. She attributes her success to her extensive marketing and sales experience, advertising and public relations that have formed the foundation of her large local network. And I will say I've known Rosemary for quite a few years and the level of attention and um, relationships that she has with her buyers and seller. I know that you just really um, go all out and care a lot for them. So absolutely pleasure to have you here, Rosemary. And we're going to be talking about real estate continues to have a lack of inventory and how it's truly a seller's market. So listed properties inventory in King County and East Side are down, Rosemary. I mean, like way, way down. Why? Why is that? What are all the reasons? There are so many reasons that Mm -hmm. that is. There's factors that are contributing to that. One of them, of course, is where do people don't have an idea of where they're going to move to. Let's say you get top dollar for your property today. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you necessarily will find something that's ideal and at a good price. Not to mention that a lot of times people have been locked into a great interest rates because interest rates yes. are fabulous. Mm-hmm. And if they have to allow that to be sold at this point, then they are looking at a new possible uh, pro- mortgage program. And the rate yes. might be higher at this mm-hmm. point. So the factors of moving forward don't look like it might be a better idea in some cases for people to move if they do not have to. Yes, makes total sense. And as the interest rates continue to go up, because most likely they will, it's so funny because I kind of make a joke now that rates are going up. Um, um, all economists for years have said this is the year rates are going up, this is the year rates go up. And uh, you know, I always say experts are right 50% of the time. I mean, if we could be right, then we could make a lot of money. But this year they were right because <laughs> interest rates are finally going up and anticipation is they'll continue to do so. So um, I also read an article uh, a couple weeks ago that was talking about another uh, reason is sellers um, are actually, they're keeping their home. So they're, instead of um, selling that home, they're keeping that as an investment property and purchasing another home. So that property is not coming back on the market like it might in a normal market because they have so much equity in there and rents are so high. I mean, why sell if you don't have to take that equity out. In some situations, they can actually still pull pull the home equity line of credit out and still have um, for down payment and still be able to uh, have that mortgage payment covered by rent. So really interest dynamics of what we have going on here and the compound effect of this and what it's doing to our real estate prices. So Rosemary, why are there so many buyers in the market? The interesting thing about the buyers coming into our market, there's a lot of new buyers as well, but we also have a lot of local buyers that maybe sold their properties and they're looking for maybe a move up. Yes. For example, I have probably a dozen waterfront clients right now that I'm looking for properties if it's just the ideal property. We only have seven properties on the market of all of West Bellevue to kind of give you an idea. Crazy. And so there's not a lot of options in that respect. Another thing that is happening and this is very real. Mm-hmm. The people that have waterfront now are absorbing the next door neighbor's home privately. So those aren't even hitting the market and they never yeah. will hit the market because the states are growing. We have so much wealth in our area that it's becoming an, in, in a situation where the not only is there a lack of land, but there's a mm-hmm. lack of property and inventory and it's not it's going to affect the future yes. of our inventory as well. Yeah. And it's just, you know, being in the industry for over two decades as as well as you on the mortgage side of it, I, you know, really you, you say when you get in certain markets, wow, I've never seen this before. And this is another, I mean, I've never seen this before. And you're always wondering what is going to be that thing that is going to adjust the market because we know at some point the market is going to adjust because it always does. But what is that reason, you know, going to be? It's... 
Well, one of the th- and and you are well aware of this as well, Tina. Mm-hmm. But interest rates, of course, will affect that. Yeah. If someone's note comes due or their ho- their new mortgage uh, that they had in place now becomes something that they have to refinance and the rates are higher, uh-huh. taxes is another issue. Yes. Our tax rate has enormously increased. I mm-hmm. mean, we're looking at 30, 33% on the east side in some neighborhoods. That's enormous. Yes. And if you're on a fixed rate income, or if you are in a situation where you don't want to take, you don't have your children in school a- at this point, and you're not so worried about what school district you're in, mm-hmm. and you're willing to, and maybe you are retired and you don't need to worry about commuting, or you can work from home. Some yeah. options may be to move into some of the outer areas where Woodenville, for example, or Mill Creek mm-hmm. or South End like Kent or Auburn, although Auburn already is hitting the million dollar mark as well. So if you are able to move out further, then uh-huh. you are able or the San Juans, for example. Yeah. Those are still affordable properties out in those areas. And Bainbridge, you know. Bainbridge <laughs> has got, you know, Bainbridge was one of re- a really hot property area within the last few years. Mm-hmm. Now it's gotten to the point where you're already at 750 to a million yeah. to get something decent. So you're, people are actually starting to look more like towards Port Townsend, Port, okay. um, Port Angeles, mm-hmm. Squim, um, and then some wow, of the San Juan Islands as well. I've sold <laughs> some properties out in Anacortes yeah. that are, you know, water view and waterfront properties and Woodby Island as well. Yes. Because it's still an affordable way for people to get what they want mm-hmm. and have that lifestyle, but not have to pay the high taxes and also cash in yes. on their investment that they have in this market because it Makes is a strong sense. market. But it will, you're right, it's yeah. going to change. Well, and you know, with the, the ability to work remotely, I would, you know, think it would be a, just a, a huge benefit for employers to be able to do that so that they can have people that can actually come work for their company, afford to live here, but live outside of this crazy area. So let's get back to uh, taxes with the new property uh, tax increase. Um, will that affect the current homeowners' decisions to possibly put their homes on the market? There's still a a large amount of buyers Mm -hmm. waiting for those properties. So they'll get picked up. The the absorption rate right now is at a a one-month absorption rate for inventory, which Mm -hmm. is the lowest it's ever been. And the normal... In a normal market, we're looking at anywhere between three to six months of inventory yes. to be absorbed. Mm-hmm. So because we have so many buyers, and I've had one of uh, my coworkers that um, she has an all-cash buyer, for example, and we thought the market had somewhat been tampered um, a little bit and tempered because of all the you know, the interest rates going up, the taxes, and Mm -hmm. we just thought, and also the winter months, we thought things were going to slow down and maybe have an opportunity for people to purchase things. Just this last couple weeks, there was a a home that came on the market in the north end in uh, around, right under Mm -hmm. 600,000. Her clients were all cash buyers. She was hoping that they had an opportunity because this house was a little tear down. Nice commute, for them, not too uh, lengthy. So if you're in the north end, you're looking at about a 20 to 30 minute drive into the Seattle area. These the, Her not clients bad. work downtown Seattle. Yeah, yeah. There were 30 offers. Yeah. Her clients lost out with an all cash deal with an escalator clause to 800000 They lost out to 900000 Wow. So there's still, and there were 30 offers. Yeah. So when you look at that amount of of inventory that's so low Mm -hmm. and the amount of buyers that are out there, there's still a lot of potential to sell your property. Yeah. And, you know, it's just surprising that, um, you know, knock on wood, that we're not having more uh, appraisal issues with value. And I will say I had a property out on Lake Stevens. Stevens, I was doing financing on. The appraisal came in low. I just had another one. And I don't do a lot of business in Lake Stevens, but for some reason I've had two purchase contracts that have came over in Lake Stevens and another one uh, came over the appraisal hasn't came back but I've called to make the listing uh, called the listing agent to show the strength of financing and she said I should let you know I've already talked with Heidi my agent that um, it's definitely not going to appraise because there are no comps so really educating the buyer knowing up front that it's not going to and are they willing to uh, waive the 
twenty on the twenty two addendum, whatever the addendum is for the appraisal. So why aren't we having it's that more appraisal issues coming in? Well, one of the interesting thing is uh, uh, the type of buyer that we're having in our area, and I think a lot of it has to do with all the tech jobs and the yeah. biotech jobs. And or- Oracle, for example, just opened up and they're hiring a tremendous amount of people. Uh-huh. Um, you still have a lot of people that can afford to pay cash. Maybe yes. they sold their house in the Bay Area or they sold their house in Boston or L.A. So when you're looking at those dynamics, they're they're not even looking at possibly a loan. Yeah. So if it doesn't appraise, it's not as not big an of an issue, issue for of them. Course. They're willing to remove, as you said, yep. that contingency. Well, clients who are moving, you know, paying fifty, seventy thousand dollars over what the appraised value would come in at. I mean, they're Correct. putting that right in there. But I'm not having appraisal challenges with value well, for most for the most part, which is surprising. Well, you're hard to find anything under seven hundred thousand in yeah. all of Seattle. Yeah. Uh, without, it, unless you go to the million dollar mark, you're going to end up in a lot of multiple offer situations. Sure. And in the east side, it's at two million mm-hmm. to kind of give you an idea. So the the comps, you're right. There's not in some neighborhoods. There's not any comps. But when there is those comps, when your people are paying cash mm-hmm. for the properties, kind of sets a new precedent. Yes. Yeah. It does, and it makes it really challenging for people to compete against those cash um, offers. So, Rosemary, is there a fear of the competitive conditions of the market with homeowners? A lot of people don't want to get into the bidding war. Yeah, yes. But if they really want a home, it's the only option they have. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's a fear of overpaying right Mm -hmm. now. Yep. There's a fear of the interest rates going up. There's a fear of their portfolios, Mm -hmm. their investment portfolios uh, with the stock market as volatile as it is. Mm -hmm. There's several dynamics, and the taxes, of course, are a big issue right now. Yes. And so there's quite a few um, clients that right now, it's probably the best time for them to sell them. Maybe they don't want to, Uh but I would definitely recommend that this is the time to do so. Yeah. Well, thank goodness on the tax reform that we still have interest credit because it was looking possibility it would be grandfathered in and taken away in a big way for new um, uh, loans being taken out, which could have been, you know, devastating. So um, uh, new construction, home construction conditions within the market. What's that look like, Rosemary? Oh, my we're still lacking oh inventory. Yeah. Uh, there's some condominium developments coming in on the east side in Bellevue and some in Seattle. Uh-huh. One of the things that people are, well, developers and builders are fearful of, and, and validly so, is the tariffs. And in some cases, they're saying that that could increase their cost of construction anywhere yeah. between 20 to 24 percent, even more. So the end product is going to be even more in price point. Yes, yes. So that is definitely affecting our market currently. There are, of course, as we've spoken before, the waterways, the traffic. Um, there's a lack of inventory as far as lots even to build, about, mm-hmm. to, to build on or yeah. buildable lots to build on. So that is very real. So even to find a tear down to tear down and and build... We have a few builders that are taking that risk and doing the spec homes, but not not all of the builders are in that market. Yeah. So, yes, we're still seeing a lack of inventory and new construction as well. And, you know, sometimes when there was, again, we've never seen this lack of inventory to this extreme, but in other markets where there's been a little bit of lack of inventory the or more buyers than there are a, a, a seller's market versus a buyer's market, kind of going with your first-time home buyers to talk about the opportunity to find that home that needs a little bit of love and do rehab. And even that strategy is not working and helping because the investors are just coming in and swooping up all of those or the flippers, you know, mainly the flippers, especially in this market. So uh, what are you doing with your first, I know you work with a lot of uh, high-end buyers, but um, also work with first-time home buyers. What advice and coaching are you helping them to get through this environment? First of all, I'd have them come and speak to Tina. Yes, about, of course, so, of course. Trying to figure out what exactly <laughs> they are able to allow in their budget yes. and in that investment. And then from there... Um, Let's figure out how far are they willing to commute yeah. and what can they really afford. And what and what is their wish list? And mm-hmm. let's try to fulfill that wish list seventy percent of it, not a hundred percent of it, because we can't that's that wish list is not going to be fulfilled at a hundred percent. Very rarely do you see that happen. So we look, try to figure out what exactly is the most important thing to them. Mm-hmm. Is it the commute? 
Is it the schools? Is it area and convenience to the amenities that they can enjoy, restaurants, sure. entertainment? Mm -hmm. Do they enjoy the symphony? Do they enjoy the ballet? Well, are those things that are inter of interest to them, sporting events? And if commuting is an issue, mm -hmm. then we have to consider if a house is not in your budget, is a condominium living or a yeah. townhome living, yeah. although there's not a whole lot of townhomes out there yeah. available right no, now. Not, not, not a lot of anything. Well, I think we might have to, maybe our solution is house sharing. <laughs> whole nother show. Uh, Rosemary, thank you so much for coming in. I uh, really appreciate it and look forward to having you back again soon. Thank you so much. I really do enjoy this. Thanks. Thank you. Coming up next in the Money Hour, the benefit of working with a real estate team, Lisa Salvage and Jennifer Kirk, right here on 1150 AM KKNW after the short break. Would you like to make a real difference for local individuals and families that are struggling with poverty, homelessness, abuse, and violence? Assistance League of the East Side is an all-volunteer, nonprofit organization that works to improve the lives of our neighbors every day. With your generosity, we can help individuals and families right here in our community through our philanthropic programs, including Operation School Bell. This year, Operation School Bell has provided 3,500 local children in need the opportunity to shop for new clothes, shoes, and coats. This helps them focus on learning and they go to school with more confidence. To learn more about how you can become a volunteer with our organization or make a tax-deductible donation, visit aleastside.org. Are you near retirement? Recently transferred to a new job and wondering what to do with your old 401k? Are you interested in learning about how to create a defensive and offensive strategy for your financial plan? Tony Sablon of Eagle Strategies can help you analyze your current financial plan, life insurance, and investments. Tony Sablon has helped hundreds of individuals, families, and business owners bring clarity to their financial plan. This is Tony Sablon with Eagle Strategies. To learn more about my practice, call me at 425-586-0977 or reach me online at ultimatewealthstrategies.com. To receive a free consultation, call me at 425-586-0977 or reach me online at Tony Sablon at eaglestrategies.com. Again, that's 425-586-0977 or reach me online at Tony Sablon at EagleStrategies.com. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 31st show. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything money. I'm here to help you in today's economy. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. You can call the show at one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty. Again, that's one eight five five four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyhour.com to discuss anything regarding money or to talk with the guests that I have in studio today. And right now in studio, first time uh, visiting me is Lisa Salvage and Jennifer Kirk with Keller Williams Realty, and the benefit of working with a real estate team. Jennifer and Lisa, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. And a little bit about, we'll start with Jennifer. Jennifer Kirk is an active member of her community and has an ability to connect with others and build lasting relationships. Jen began her real estate career with Windermere, following many years managing a building inspection company. Uh, this expertise, expertise and her connection to contractors, inspectors, and appraisers is invaluable. Also, Lisa Lisa Salvage has a lengthy business background in professional services, including contract negotiation and management. Her background, create thinking and analytical mind, make her a natural fit for real estate industry. Lisa built strong relationships derived from great communication and collaboration. Jen and Lisa are Northwest natives with a deep understanding of the region and its culture, and both love spending time with their family and friends. So we're talking today about the benefits of working with a real estate team having a partner in crime uh -huh. is uh, great not for only the two of you but also for the clients that you serve so Jen 
How did the two of you actually meet? How'd this connection start? Absolutely. Uh, we actually met over 15 years ago when our kids ended up in an after-school care program together. Uh, my son was in first grade and her son was in third. Uh, we were actually both single moms at the time mm-hmm. and had super busy boys running around. So we naturally just hit it off and kind of helped support each other through that process. Uh, we became fast friends and over the years, uh, we've definitely become family, kind of like sisters. Uh, yeah. We even vacation together. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You guys just got back from uh, the Mexico. Hawaii, right? Oh, Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, Lisa, what made the two of you decide to actually come together, bring that friendship into a business partnership? Well, our strengths complement each other. Uh huh. Jen managed a building inspection company for years, and she truly has an understanding of structural issues that benefit both buyers and sellers. Uh huh. I negotiated contracts for over 10 years with Fortune 500 companies, and I have a business management background, and all those things play into the real estate industry well. But the biggest thing Mm -hmm. is we're both customer service based, everything that we've done in our past. And our clients are a focus, and that really was the key ingredient there. Yeah, well, it's important when you do have that partnership that you both bring your individual strengths to come in, but what's needed to be successful in the industry, which is the customer service and being able to provide that high level um, is important. And so, you you know, that's a great. Now, let's talk about from the client's perspective and where um, a team approach really is going to benefit your buyers and sellers. Absolutely. I think the largest benefit is that none of our clients ever feel neglected. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lisa and I really have each other's backs when it comes to taking care of our clients, and I, th- and I think that they really feel that. We offer this collective knowledge. Uh, we brainstorm a lot of strategies together, may have uh, two different ideas on how to uh, approach the situation, and we're able to kind of pull those together and uh, really come up with a great plan. And we can cover for one, each- one another when, when needed. If somebody's Unless both of, of you are in Mexico, then what happens? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, then we have <laughs> our laptops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we work remotely yeah. with a Mai Tai. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, there's also the obvious benefit of having two agents working on your behalf for Uh the investment of one. Yeah. And, you know, the collaboration is important. Sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, which we all are, um, it can get a little lonely out there. And so really being able to have that, again, that partner in crime and that dynamic uh, duo to work together um, and that collaboration. So, Lisa, um, do the two of you have a specific area that you focus on? Yeah, you know, residential is our focus. I mean, and that includes homes, condos, and multifamily dwellings. Um, Our clients, we support them through first-time purchases, whether they're downsizing, they're trading up, they're Uh relocating, or they're investing. But uh, all that said, we can still happy, we'd be happy to assist with any kind of commercial or land transaction. But again, Residential is our focus. Yeah. Yeah. And Jen, what other benefits do the two of you provide for your clients? We're very client focused. Uh, The efficiency we bring to the table in moving the transaction to closing and the idea that two brains are better than one Mm -hmm. support our clients, whether they're buying, selling or investing. And I think that's really important. The unique friendship that we share brings a feeling of kind of this collaboration that is client inclusive and creates a trusting relationship, uh, kind of like family. Um, And we're also really fun to work with. And I think that makes a big difference, too. Yes, I love that. Uh, Lisa, what about a a favorite experience that you can share? Oh, yeah, I have one for you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm sure you got a few of them. Yeah, actually. But this one is uh, we were able to help a family relocate from Houston. And we had so much fun introducing them to Seattle. And we were really lucky that they already understood the massive market price difference that they were going to encounter when they I got here. Yeah. Yeah. So that understanding made it so that their primary house hunting visit, they were able to focus on neighborhoods mm-hmm. and style. And then we followed up with pictures and videos to help further communicate design and quality and layouts. And they eventually found their dream home. So that was yeah. pretty great. Nice. But for us, despite the diff- the distance, we were able to create this great trusting relationship with them and we're really lucky enough to call them friends now 
Yeah. And that's a lot of times when you are in the, the real estate space. I mean, you are getting up close and personal mm-hmm. out there looking at properties. And so um, it's nice to be able to build that um, that long uh, term uh, relationship and friendship. You know, I was that we were talking earlier before uh, we went live on the show about um, a workshop that's put on by real for real estate agents, professionals every year. They bring these attorneys come in and they talk about all these different things. And I was sitting there, had nothing to do with what they were talking about, really, but they were talking about contingencies and and removing finance and thing. Um, And I thought about this when uh, you're talking about the um, uh, success uh, experience. But they should add something to a contract in this market that actually lists what each one of those contracts, if they're waiving their finance contingency inspection, they're going, they're waiving appraisal, whatever that is, what the price is, what their closing timeline is. And that form is completed for all of them. And then it can be passed on to all of the buyers, the 30, 35, 40 buyers that didn't get that house so they can actually see what's happening because it's going to make it easier. I, I, again, I thought about that because you were talking about your clients that came in and they knew what was happening. They did. And Absolutely. really, that's what success is at a much earlier stage. And sometimes the only opportunity to have success because what's happening, people are actually um, backing out and deciding not to continue. And what a huge loss that is for somebody to just not buy because they don't have that that data and that information to know how to win. Mm-hmm. Anyways, took us off a... Uh, um, uh, topic there a little bit. But Jen, uh, what do you love most about selling real estate? I think the process of it all, especially in this market, there is uh, definitely a process to where yes. somebody starts and where they where they end. And I think our job is to really guide our clients in focusing on realistic expectations, uh, which oftentimes means balancing their needs and their wants, mm-hmm. uh, maybe giving up something to uh, reap the benefits of of something else. Uh, I liken it to dating in our younger years when we had a list of about 25 must-haves um, in a significant other. And now that we're more seasoned, our list includes only a handful of super important attributes, and we've learned to kind of leave the rest so behind. So like five instead of 25? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we pick our battles. Yep. Yeah, I yeah. love it. So Lisa, <clears throat> what about um, specific approach that the two of you take in selling real estate? Yeah, we have a specific approach. This was a really big topic of discussion when we were deciding to become a team. Uh So Jen and I are all about building strong relationships and making connections. Um, You know, we're working with many different generations, and we have the ability to make that connection with each of those. Mm -hmm. We... uh, we're working, we're doing our best to make sure that our clients feel that they're well represented and supported because for most of our clients, we understand that buying a home, this real estate purchase is likely the biggest investment they're going to make in their lives. And our passion is to help our clients find their way home. Yes. And I'd, I'd love to ask, um, you know, both of you in this challenging environment that we're in. And, you know, for me, I always say the bigger the challenge, the bigger the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, but how are you guys navigating uh, through this challenging market? Jen? You know, I think so many of the clients get really discouraged as yes. time goes on. And uh, I, I think we're really face-to-face agents a lot of the time, and, and we do the driving with the clients. And uh-huh. uh, many, many times we go out together with our clients instead of separating out. Um, and I think that that just kind of helps to keep that motivation going when we have a client that comes to us and says, I'm so tired of competing in this market, and I think I'm just going to kind of give it a rest for a little yeah. while. That helps to keep that momentum going a little bit more. Love that. So, you know, hand in hand, really being there to support them, to be of sort th- support through this process and to help encourage not to give up. I mean, you're going to get there. It's just you got to keep fighting the time. fight. Yeah. Absolutely. Lisa, what about you? So as you can see, even in our bios and how we've answered all these questions, mm-hmm. this is for us, this is it almost feels incredibly personal. This is we love this. Right. The fact that we're a team, we bring our clients in and they're our team as yes, well. They're yeah. part of our team. So the the time we spend with them and the fact that we treat them just like we would a family member mm-hmm. or a friend because their interests are just as important as ours, just keeping them feeling like we're moving forward, don't give up. Yeah. This is when it happens is when it's supposed to happen. Sure. And if it's not the right house for you, if you didn't get it, then maybe that wasn't the right house for yeah. you. Yeah. 
And a good point, because I can't tell you how many times and how many offers have not come through. And when mm-hmm. that, that one finally does, I always ask them, so how do you feel about losing out on all those other houses? And almost all the time, they're like, this is this is our house. Mm-hmm. So I, I totally um, believe that as well. As we're wrapping up our time here, I just want to ask you one more uh, question, Jen. Um, what are you, uh, how are you coaching your buyers to stand out in this market? You know, I've talked earlier with uh, Rosemary with all the cash buyers and we've got the investors coming in. And so what are you helping them do to stand out? I think one of the big things that we're doing is to really, when we're looking at their price point, we're reducing that down so that we have more wiggle room out there, right? Uh If we don't have a cash buyer and somebody that is getting financed, um, we really work to uh, make sure that they have enough space in there to be able to escalate and really compete with what's going on out there. That's a huge part of what we're doing. Um, And then really working to uh, reduce the contingencies, obviously, getting ahead of the game and doing an inspection ahead of time, all those sorts of things to kind of uh, get the ball rolling. Yeah, love that. Lisa, anything? Making them the most appealing option that they possibly can be with what they have to offer. I mean, you know, it's rough if you don't have cash out there, Mm -hmm. but there are ways to be the most appealing offer without having cash walking in the door. Yes. But it really is about working with your client's expectations, whether they're a buyer or a seller. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Makes, uh, makes total sense. And, you know, for all of you out there that are um, uh, looking at purchasing, really what the show is all about is bringing the best of the best experts um, in all areas regarding financing to help you. And that's, you know, again, why I'm here. That's why all of my guests are here. So uh, please use them all as uh, resources. And I appreciate both of you being here. I'd love to have you uh, back again soon. Thank you Thanks so much. So much. It was fun. And this is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. Same time, same place next week. Weekend, so make sure you don't miss on the show. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks, everyone. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, is a licensed loan originator with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, NMLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the preceding program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC.